I just need to start out by saying this documentary made Kerala look beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Hello there. Namaste. So I just finished watching the, the documentary. I'm using that term loosely. It's called Curry and Cyanide. It's about the Jolly Joseph case that's still going on. It's still... And why I say loosely is because this is this is more of a propaganda hit piece. I can't say for certain what is real, what isn't, because the trial is still going on. So uh, she allegedly killed six people. And the documentary basically follows the death toll of what happens. So Jolly is basically this girl from a poor income family who wants a better life. Allegedly, she wants a better life. So she marries the introverted oldest son of a well-off family who is loved by the community. And then the in-law, she lies about her, her, her qualifications. She lies that she has a master's degree. She is so, after they're married, her mother keeps pushing her into stuff. And allegedly she kills her mother with cyanide. And then it continues on from there where she, after she kills her mother, then she starts having an affair. The father finds out, then she takes out her father. It seems like her husband might have known about a few things. Then he, she ends up taking out her husband again, allegedly. And I say that with full confidence that this was more of a, a hit piece than anything because when a documentary goes around interviewing people about the situation you never go to just people who agree because it felt uncomfortable at the end even even the the jolly's own son she she he is basically now being raised by her sister-in-law the one who basically accused Jolly of all this stuff had the investigation pushed for. So it, it feels uncomfortable that everyone being interviewed it is in a close relationship with each other and Jolly basically stands alone. The only person with a contrary opinion that they interviewed was what I assume was the court mandated lawyer, not a, her own lawyer, like a court mandated lawyer. So it's safer to interview them. They didn't go to anyone else maybe it was like it would have nice i didn't see any disclaimer saying oh the people who were on the side of jolly refused to be interviewed for this and something like that would have been nice to have because everything was hit piece after hit piece after hit piece saying she did it saying she did it saying she did it even even this part at the very end which was very suspicious to me this is where it started throwing up a lot of red flags because there's one scene where they take Jolly back to her house and all of all of a sudden the cops find cyanide poison there in a jar, in a massive jar filled with cyanide powder. What? <laughs> and then there is a the incident where the, the sister-in-law says she goes to the jail to talk with her 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 sister to, to talk to Jolly and basically tell her to stop calling her son every day. To stop talking to her son. She's going to raise uh, J Jolly's son. The sister-in-law is telling her not to. And we didn't get any any corroborating details of the 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 what the sister-in-law talked to Jolly. It looked like there were guards in the room because they reenacted the whole thing. It looked like there were people overseeing everything. And she was saying Jolly said things which were completely accus uh, like uh, uh, admitting to everything. Which Jolly basically admitted to everything. And I'm like, if that was the case, she would be found guilty immediately. If that was the case, none of this would have been... Wh why aren't they getting cooperating evidence from the ones who are imprisoning them? Maybe there's a, a, some kind of deal in place that prevents the prison guards from disclosing it. But a little more information on the side of Jolly's innocent would have been nice. Because always, like... My mother was in law enforcement, and she dealt with this this obscene criminal who took out one of the greatest officers in the area. There's still a, a Memorial Day for the guy to this day, and it's been almost 30, 20-something years now. 20, almost 30 years. And that guy's mother and f family to, this, to the very day still believe in his innocence. And I think he's... No, I think they finally, you know, because he got the death penalty, and that's rare in the state of california that's rare and he finally got the death penalty. it took um, like 17 years to finally get it but yeah and it's just i didn't i didn't care for how it went about it i honestly didn't because there was no one on jolly's defense absolutely no one it seems like everyone they were talking to was on the side of the sister-in-law was from the sister-in-law everyone else who possibly would have allied with uh jolly 
was dead or everyone because i'm assuming that maybe she wasn't maybe one or two of the six deaths she might have caused because it said because they said it started out with the very beginning with the worst thing she ever did was lie that she had a master's degree that was the worst mistake she ever did because uh, allegedly it led to every other death six other deaths including the death of a two-year-old child but there are a lot of things that just seem inconsistent in the story which is why i basically say it's it's just alleged. These are just allegations, and no one should take this verbatim as concrete evidence. There are just too many things that are red flags, because I like watching documentaries. I really do. But when they do it like this, it is immediately a red flag, because it's like, why are we only getting one side of this discussion? Why? We always need both. Even, even when you have documentaries like on the, the crazy cults that are here in the U.S., after they've burn down their entire temple and the few of the survivors that escaped the the ladies from that cult are still talking about how great the pastor was and how he was done wrong and all this nonsense but we still get their point of view we don't get the cops point of view we get the cops point of view in that case but we also get the crazies point of view and we can see how unhinged they are in this one it was literally just one point of view and it was absolutely aggravating me because i enjoyed it but after a while i started seeing it as more fiction because it's like how much truth is actually here well all the deaths took place but they're accusing this one person of everything but a lot of things seem up in the air she's an easy target because she is actually uneducated she lied about a lot of stuff they, they they're maybe someone's pinning something on her again i don't know and reality is stranger than fiction so maybe there's a lot more things going on that we don't know about. But in the end, don't take this documentary to mean this actually happened. Well, other than the deaths. The, the, to the think that she is actually the guilty party. Not until she's proven guilty. And even then, people who have been proven guilty have come out after the evidence has been retested. They find new cases. They find new witnesses and find out, oh, I'm sorry for the past 20 years you were incarcerated. We apologize, but we were wrong. And that's the thing. It's like this whole thing, this narrative is designed to make everyone assume, because the court case is still going on, to assume that she is guilty. And I don't like that. I absolutely do not like that. When is here with documentaries, even if the case is, especially if the case is going on, you should have both sides. Even when the case is concluded, you should have both sides, both perspectives. It helps us grow as a people. It helps us learn to see instances here and there. Hear one person say one thing. Hear another person say another thing. We can analyze. We can judge for ourselves. Documentaries should be informative pieces, not hit pieces. And this was just like, oh, here's the information from one point of view. Because that's all you need. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I did enjoy it. I did like it. It was actually very interesting to go through. It was beautiful. Because honestly, when you see a movie, they don't show you the like nature shots. At, and Because everything there was just in the moment. It was just how it is. And I loved seeing that. When you're watching a movie, everything... It's funny how I'm going to the fiction completely now with movies. Everything is like curated. You block the shots. You know exactly who's on the scene and who isn't. So I did like seeing how beautiful Kerala... Kerala... I think that's how you say it. Kerala is is absolutely beautiful. I would love to see it, especially if there's no cyanide left around in the area. <laughs> but yeah, I firmly believe that this is more of a biased piece. It is definitely not an informative piece other than letting you know the only thing that was factual is six people died. Six people died. That's the only thing that's actually informative in this. Maybe the, the cop's perspective that they could have spent, it's two hours and 35 minutes. Well, two hours and 30 minutes long. They could have spent another 20, 30 minutes interviewing different people who are just like, I don't know. Well, I thought she was always a good person. This, 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 this. This is what we've seen of her. She could not have done it. Because you can't trust the son's perspective. She apparently was never a good mother. <laughs> So, you can't trust the son's perspective. You cannot trust the sister-in-law's perspective to be biased. You cannot trust the cop's perspective to be biased. Because they they want to they, they realize that six deaths happened underneath the roof. They want to get a court case. They want to settle it. They want to get it done. You can't trust anyone's perspective that they've shown. Even kind of the attorney for Jolly. You can't trust his opinion because I think he's a corn-appointed attorney. 
He's not her actual, well, of course, the court appointed attorney is an actual attorney, but you, you know what I mean. But other than that, I mean, it is an informative piece and it was nice to watch. And <laughs> I, I mean, I, I know that women can be very vindictive, uh, but this one just felt off with how it was done. That's just my take from it. That's how I felt from it, especially knowing how documentaries are supposed to pull you to think certain ways. And the fact that they had no contrary opinion is where I have an issue. If you want, it's just like watching what the health. It's like, it's telling you how great veganism is without talking to the peace people where being a vegan almost killed them. It's, it's like that. It, it makes no sense. You only talk to the people where it's a good thing. You don't talk to the people who are dying because of it. You don't talk to the people who, well eat whatever they want, you, you're only talking to vegans who where the life works for them. It's just one of those things that bothers me when documentaries are done. It's just, you can't have it be one-sided, but that's the case. The, the, the director, the cinematographer, the writer, they always are there to tell their perspective more than anything. And that's what I feel that the director should take and the writer or whatever should understand is like their perspective isn't the naturally the right perspective. You have to give contrary opinions to what you believe to grow. If you get stuck in a small little echo chamber, you became one. You become one of those people shouting on Twitter into the void that nothing is done your way, and everyone is the ists and isms and Aussies. I can't say the the the, the n word. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it was a good watch. I enjoyed seeing it. It made me think about things that got me interested to say maybe this happened maybe this happened maybe this is what happened because the case is still ongoing and the the documentary just felt like a one-sided hit piece thank y'all for watching talk to you next time toodles